what's going on YouTube family today we're doing a little bit something different uh, we're in the kitchen instead of outside so there was a video that I made on Thursday I think maybe Wednesday or Thursday about the uh, death by scooter project and uh, I didn't upload it because overall it turned out to be a, a big failure um, so I didn't uh, I didn't upload that video it didn't it wasn't interesting, uh, so I made the choice not to upload it. I was going to upload it today on Sunday. So, uh, instead, today we're going to be going over uh, how to can some chicken. We've had some chicken in the deep freezer for about a year now, and that's about as long as you can keep it in there. So we're going to go ahead and move that from uh, usable storage into long-term storage, and then we'll go out um, around tax time and we'll get another and we'll restock the deep freezer for usable storage for our pantry storage. Um, so what we've done here, um, we had a happy accident, um, not the way we wanted to do things, but we had a happy accident and I made a mistake. I got bone in, some bone in chicken and some boneless. You want to do um, boneless when you're canning. Um, I do anyways, sorry. You can do it with the bone in, but I like to do it boneless because it's just easier but had a happy accident so now what we're going to do uh since we don't have a any bouillon cubes or bullion how do you say that bullion bullion whatever anyways we don't have any chicken juice cubes you know with the and you put them in the water and they turn into chicken juice we don't have any of that so we took the bones uh we deboned the chicken um and we left some fat in there uh, left the bones in there and a little bit of meat and then we're gonna add water to that and we're gonna make our own chicken stock um, or bone broth and then the rest of the chicken we cut up into chunks um, about yay big so um, then what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna pre-cook our chicken just uh, just to add a little bit of a longer lifetime on that. Um, so we're going to pre-cook our chicken to 80%. Thanks, dear. Um, she's in the background telling me all this. I I'm not the one who did the research. It's all her. But she don't want to be in the YouTube sphere yet. So maybe, maybe one day I'll convince her to have her own YouTube video or YouTube channel. And uh, she can show you all how to do this because... I'm fairly clueless, um, but that's going to be the adventure of it. So uh, we're going to put it in the oven, cook it to 80%. Basically, we just want it to cook the outside. We don't want it fully cooked because it will cook in the pressure canner. Um, so we're going to throw that in the oven. And then while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and make our bone broth. And we'll jump cut to um, when we're making the bone broth. And she'll uh, explain to me, and then I'll explain to you how to make bone broth um, all this is fairly self-explanatory. Um, the only seasoning we put on our chicken was salt and pepper. And then you mix it all together, and we're going to put that in the oven, uh, make the bone broth. So that's it for this part. Don't I'm going to stir while it's cooking. Stir what? Stir the chicken while it's cooking. You're using a deep dish like mine. Okay, so we're using a deep dish, so we got to stir the chicken periodically. And how long does it cook? 30 to 45 minutes. 30 to 45 minutes. All right, so you're going to keep your chicken cut. 400 degrees, 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if I'm smart when I'm editing, I'll put all that in text. Um, so that way you know what I'm talking about. Hold on, buddy. I'm making a YouTube video. The family's all here. Um, so, you know, that uh, is what it is, you know. But, um, so I'll, I'll put that all up in the... Um, shh. I'll put that all up on the video. And then we're going to jump ahead and we're going to cut to where we're making bone broth. Um, and then I'll explain that process as we do it. Alright, I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, leave me a comment. I'm probably going to throw this up on the Reddit too. Um, so hopefully y'all come over from the Reddit. Um, that's it. Alright, uh, what's going on everybody? Sorry if you hear anything in the background. We're getting uh, the boy put down. So, um, Alright, we got a quick update here. Oh, that broth smells so good. Oh, Alright, 
So, uh, first things first, let me just say, um, if you're going to be doing this, um, read the instructions on your canner um, and t make a day out of it because this is going to take this is going to take a while. This is an all-day kind of process, not just oh, we cooked the chicken, all right, it's good to go. It takes a couple hours to do everything, so just keep that in mind. All right, so first things first, as with everything, clean all your utensils and your jars. Um, they just need to be clean, you know, soap and water right now, um, just to get the factory debris and um, oils or whatever's on it off of it. We will be sanitizing them before we put them in the uh, in the pot. Or sorry, in the pressure cooker. All right. So the instructions I have been given: take your jar. These are the smaller ones. We did um, we didn't read all the way through. It didn't say the size. Um, so these are pint love. I think these are pint jars. Um, hold on, it'll say on the thing. It'll say on the box. Sixteen ounce. So whatever that is. I'm not good with the conversions. Um, so these are whatever 16 ounces comes out to. That's the size of those jars. Um, a little, little mistake, but no big deal. Um, so what you do is you fill it up with chicken, and then you fill that up with broth, and then you put the seasonings on it um, on top to add some extra flavor. All right. I got a book. I got instructions in a book. Um, I would like to eventually have her write all these down for y'all and then we can maybe sell an actual cookbook. She does a lot of cooking and it's all good cooking. So, it would be nice. Alright, so we got our broth here. Cooking away. Uh, so, what is in our broth? Oh, there's the chicken there. Grab you a chunk. That right there is fine. Uh, it doesn't have to be fully cooked. So, I'm going to call that good. We'll snatch that out of there. And then I'll go over what's in the um, broth. Alright, so uh, let's see. Back to the book. What we got in our uh, stock pot right here. We have uh, chicken bones that I showed you before in the previous part. Um, this will all be in subtext on the video um, so pause it or um, pause it and write that down all right so we got our chicken bones that I showed you or earlier we got two quarts of water two tablespoons of minced garlic the uh, like the kind that you get from the grocery store just a, a jar of that's fine garlic um, that's what we use you probably use dried if that's all you have, um, but it might be a bit more. Um, one tablespoon of seasoned salt, one onion, minced onion, uh, one tablespoon of Mrs. Dash, tablespoon of dried rosemary, tablespoon of dried parsley, tablespoon of dried red pepper flakes, tablespoon of Cajun, which you, um, Don't tell her that. Um, all right, and then the seasoning on top of the can, um, which is here, literally just dried seasonings that we put on top to add some extra flavor. Is going to be one tablespoon of seasoned salt. We use Lowry's. Lowry's. Um, one tablespoon of Mrs. Dash. One tablespoon of dried parsley. Tablespoon of red pepper flakes. And tablespoon of Cajun, and that is the um, seasoning that goes on top. And then we're gonna cook our stock. The crooked, sorry. That's the chicken. And then our stocks here. We're gonna cook the stock till it's boiling. And then you're gonna see all this stuff on top. All that right there. Uh, we're gonna scoop that off as well as these bones and we're going to try to pull any chicken um, meat that's still on the bones off to reuse at a later date. Um, 
So you cook till it's boiling and then turn it down to medium and simmer. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Alright. Cook till it's boiling and turn down to simmer and then uh, simmer for 10 minutes, you said? Okay, 20 minutes to 3 hours, you put it on simmer. Uh, basically, from what I'm understanding, it's kind of like tea. The longer you simmer, the better it'll be. Um, and then, okay, and then you strain off. Well, you're going to scoop off all that fat and bone, right? Yeah. Okay. Strain it from this pot into something else? Yeah. Okay. And then you strain it into a secondary container. Um, just to get the last of the fat and other chunklets out. Um, but that's it for this video. We're going to continue to uh, let this simmer. It smells so good in here, y'all. I can't wait. I'm, I'm kind of upset that we're going to be putting this away and not eating it. But um, we'll, probably, we'll probably pop one just to try it um, and then keep that, uh, you know, just put that in the fridge. I just want to make sure that it's good before we put the rest in storage. Um, so we'll get back to you when that is done simmering and I'll show you how to strain it and scoop everything off. And then we're probably gonna discard the bones and uh, save the, the meat if there's any meat left on them. All right, I will check back with you in the next part. Thanks for sticking around. It's probably gonna be a long form video simply because there's a lot of steps and a lot of safety precautions you got to take this that and third so we'll get back into you uh, uh, into it when we're about ready to sanitize and fill our cans all right I'm gonna get lunch I'm gonna let this simmer and I'll get back to you later check around to the end it will be worth it I think all right now we got our oh, this thing only twist, twist sideways, it bothers me. Hold please. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, so we got our pressure canner here. Big old delicious pressure canner. All right, so we went over and we checked our lid, made sure that um, everything's tight. All the, our seals are good. All our gaskets are good. Um, we're going to run some vegetable oil on the inside of this, and then we're also going to run some vegetable oil on the inside of this. Now, before you do these, there's a checklist, a safety checklist that you got to go over. You're checking all your seals, you're checking your gauges, because if you do this wrong, and if you're not paying attention and you're not careful, this could take out your kitchen. If you overpressurize this, this could take out your kitchen. This is dangerous stuff. Don't do this without paying attention. Like, just YouTube it, you know, take a quick uh, gander at what happens when these things fail. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> read the instruction, man. Well, I don't read. I can't read, so that's what I have her for. Um, so, we're going to grab our vegetable oil. Um, now, don't get too... What's that? Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to vegetable oil this, and then I'll show you all the broth. Um, so, don't be too uh, daunted or intimidated by that fact. Um, these are very safe. If you You just have to be careful. You just have to follow the instructions. People have been doing it for, you know, hundreds of years, and um, it's always been, it's always, you know, been safe. It's just, just be careful, you know, practice good judgment is all I can say. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more of this just on the finger, and then you just kind of got to go around, and all this is going to do is make sure we have a good seal that we don't have any steam leaking, um, because steam is extraordinarily hot, and steam burns are no fun. Um, I wouldn't know, thankfully, so, although I have, I do occasionally play in the, the Ford, so I do have, um, some experience with burns. Alright, so we're going to unplug you, oh, sweet lord, come on, oh. Oh, hands on the towel. oh, wait, the hands on the towel, how about I rinse them off, hold on, alright, so, hands are washed, alright, now we have our homemade broth, this was simmering, so we boiled it, and then it was simmering for about what? Almost an hour. Almost an hour. All right, we got our lunch, and we're, now we're back. So, I mean, it looks exactly like what you'd buy in the store. I think that uh, I think we're looking good on that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fill one on camera. Um, 
and then cut the video and show you how we load them in the uh, pressure cooker. Uh, well, it's actually a pressure canner, or can you do both? All right, hold on. Let me get you a little bit more height. Well, yeah, but I just want to get a thousand foot view. All right, so we're going to come over here, uh, put a towel down. She was smart enough to make sure I put a towel down. Oh, uh, you can't see me. All right, back. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to see me. Not sure. Hopefully it does. Yeah, sure. All right, so here's the plan. I'm going to grab a spoon. Now oh, there's a spoon. We're going to grab our chicken and uh, bring you a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Stay. Yeah. All right. I'm the greatest videographer that there ever has been. I already know it. It's fine. Um, so, first things first, over here, we got this heating up. Three quarts of water, and then that's just a... Uh, Heating up until it hits 180 degrees, which is um, right, before it right before it boils. So, boiling and then turn down the heat a little bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fill up one jar, show you how to do that, and then I'm going to come uh, cut the video, show you how to load it in. Uh, I already said that. Dang it. All right, so chicken. Boom. Get a funnel. These are, um, I can link these. Everything that we got on Amazon, if y'all want, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll link it later. Um, I put immediately just way too much chicken in there. So let's grab some of this back out. Alright. Alright, so this trick little thing comes with a headspace gauge. Come on, focus for me. Alright, well you can't see it, but it says... One inch, three quarters of an inch, uh, half an inch, and quarter inch of head space. So we want all the way up to one inch of chicken space. So we can call that pretty good. Um, give it a little smashing down. Um, put another another chunk. So I guess with these smaller jars, we should cut them up a little bit smaller. But um, that's fine. And then we're going to check so we got a little bit more that we can fit in here all right kind of make it all nice a um, couple more pieces couple more pieces that should do it one inch of headspace so basically you're gonna put it on the one inch mark and then whatever this touches is at one inch of headspace um, I don't know if I explained that basically we're just I move my big mongoloid hands doing that and that's at one inch of headspace all right so now what we're gonna do uh, hold on let me check on the water water's doing some things um, all right so now we're gonna put the funnel back on grab our stock which we just made and then we're gonna fill it all the way up right all the way up to the top one inch headspace as well, so just fill it until it's uh, even with the chicken. Uh, let me move back and over here. Let me actually drop you down one notch so you can kind of see what I'm doing. That's a little better. All right, broth, funnel. Check in. Uh, also, why you do it on a towel is because I'm a messy human being uh, by nature. So, that's a thing. Alright, here's our liquid mark. We're going to keep going. A little bit more. And just a touch more. Yep, alright. That looks to be about good. Alright, and then... The lady off camera will tell me exactly how much of this spice that I showed you how to make before. Um, just, one. just one of these one quarter tablespoons. Oh my goodness. This is why I don't cook, ladies and gentlemen. I need to get her on camera, so comment down below and just like haggle the crap out of this woman until she gets on camera and explains this stuff. Because 
I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, one quarter teaspoon of that, and then throw it right on top. And then take your paper towel, which got moved to Indochina. Oh, it's over here. Uh, take your paper towel to the lid. Wipe the lid down real nice like. Oh, yeah, this is hot, by the way, so um, maybe don't grab it like an idiot. Ow. It's, it's fine. Uh, Alright, wipe it off nice and good like. Uh, and then come in here. This the little magnet. Um, this is usually for if you uh, sanitize your lids, like in boiling water. That way, you know, you don't scald the flesh from your bones. Um, and then we're going to put that on top like that. Take this and... Wow, I scratched it already. Pull in a china shop. Alright. Like so, right? Nice and tight. Alright. So, back you up, flip you up. I have the, uh, the greatest camera skills. I just want everybody to know I'm the greatest cameraman of all time. Um, and if anybody wants to fight me, we can go to the playground after school and we can just duke it out. Because uh, I'm the greatest cameraman of all time. Anyways, so there's our one jar. I missed a step. What step did I miss? Well, let me see it. Uh, it looks pretty good, but make sure when you're doing that stuff that you make sure you get all the air bubbles out of the, the, the tool. Which tool? This tool? Yeah. Okay, I missed a step. That looks fine. It's mostly for other things, not really meat, but... Okay. All right, so what you want to do is you want to stir this up. You can use a butter knife. Yeah. Or a butter knife. Um, and then you want to stir it, and just basically you want to tamp it so all the bubbles come out. Um, that looks pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so you just want to do like that, and then go ahead, wipe your lid off one more time, throw it on there, and then we're going to do that for the rest of them, and then we will uh, show you how we stack them in, and then tell you exactly how long to cook that for. So thank you all for checking this part out. Um, like I said, stick around to the end. I think it'll be, I think it'll be worth your time. Um, and if, if you do stick around to the end, I appreciate you. Um, I'll see you in the next bit. Alright, welcome back. So we are good. We have just uh, finished up. Sorry, you're going to be up much taller than me because I want you to be able to view down into the pot. So you're going to be looking down on me. Not a big deal. Um, so we just finished up canning the rest of them exactly like we did um, on the example one that I showed you. I'm gonna hop you over to the pot right now. It's uh, it's boiling pretty much, so we gotta we gotta get going on that. Um, so we're gonna show you how we loaded it up. Uh, I'm surprised this thing doesn't come with batteries this light. I wish it did. Anyways, all right. So here's our pot right here, and then so not during the cooking process, but during the cooling pots process, you want to have an inch of space. So we just put in an inch of space now. Um, we're going to turn up this heat a little bit, get back to 180. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and seal it up and we'll show you uh, that process in a second. Um, There's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of cuts. There's a lot of steps. So, um, All right, so what's the next step? We are heating up the pan, uh, make sure everything's nice and oiled. Um, and then we are going to seal the lid. I always want to make sure. Um, this is our pressure weight. I think that's at what, 15 pounds, right? That's 11. This is, this is 11. That's at, that's at 15, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to cut the video and then we're going to show you, um, the next step afterwards. All right. We are back. We, uh, had a little, um, spat for a second. We were trying to figure out how, uh, how big the jars are that we got because they're in pints or they're in ounces not in pints um, because we need it in pints and they come in pints so I'm getting one um, anyway <laughs> well, nerd joke um, okay so we figured out that we got pint jars one pint jars I believe I hope hopefully we're right so according to that we're gonna cook them for 65 minutes so right now you're gonna hear some sizzling and some spitting what's going on here is I gotta drop you down actually. I gotta get like a better telescoping on. 
or like get better at, at you know what I need to do I need to get better at pre staging my video equipment wouldn't that be smart okay yep all right here we go we are gaining pressure hopefully you can see that we're sitting at uh, 10 something pounds let's see we've got like dots and dashes like where you got Morse code I got 10 11 12 13 14 okay so they're in one increment so we're sitting at 13 pound of pressure uh, right now hopefully you saw that all right um, Although it might be backwards for y'all. I hope not. Because I know if it's selfie, sometimes it's flipped. And hopefully it's not backwards. But, uh, anyways, what we have here. This is our 15-pound weight. Basically, if steam gets above 15 pounds, it'll um, start to rise up, allowing that steam to come out. So that way it stays at 15 pounds. Um, and then we're going to have to adjust the gas, the fuel... Um, so that way if it starts going over that 15 pounds, like we're, we're heating it too much, we got to back off that heat a little bit, so that way it doesn't sit at like 16 or 18 pounds, because then it could mess up the canning process. So, uh, I'm going to do some fiddling with this, make sure it sits at about the right uh, temperature. Um, quick note that we forgot to say, um, hopefully you saw it in the previous part, um, earlier in the video, um, they're not sitting on the bottom of the canner. They're sitting on um, a canning rack that the pressure canner comes with. So this is a canner slash cooker. Um, but since we're, uh, you know, we're canning, we don't want them on the bottom because they could rupture, which is not what we want. So, uh, all right, we're sitting at 17 pounds right now. So I'm going to go ahead and you hear that? It's starting to rock, letting out some of that pressure. So I'm going to kill the heat a little bit. We're going to turn it on down because now everything is pressurized. Uh, so we're going to go to like a medium heat, medium heat, uh, and we'll see what that does. Hopefully, it'll bring that pressure down a couple of degrees because it says caution after you get to 20. So it should be fine. Uh, She's kicking, she's kicking. Uh, so we'll kill the pressure down to medium, and we'll make sure that that comes on down. It'll take a second because it's under pressure and a lot of heat. So it'll take a second to come on down. And then we're going to fiddle with it, and then once we get it to a steady 15, you know, where it's not doing this and I keep having to adjust, once we get to a steady 15 pound, we'll start the timer for 65 minutes, and then... Uh, We'll come back to you once that's done and show you the next step. Hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I was talking about in the previous video where it's going to be lifestyle. It's going to be a little bit of everything. Some fabrication, some construction, some electrical uh, that I'll get to in the future. And then some homesteading stuff like this. Hopefully you enjoy this. I'm going to hit this on the Reddit. Um, and... Uh, I'll post this on the Reddit, so hopefully we'll get some views from there. If you're from Reddit, hi, thanks for making it this far. Um, she's starting, she hasn't risen anymore. It looks like she's starting to come down on the medium heat. Um, so we're sitting at 16 pounds right now. So, that thing is making noise. So, uh, 15 pounds steady, um, 65 minutes, and we'll see you after that. Alright, what's going on? We are back in the kitchen here. So, we have cooked our chicken uh, at about 10 pounds of pressure. Uh, let's see if this is cool and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Nope, that is not cool. One second. There we go. So, hopefully, as you can see here, Hopefully it's not backwards for y'all. Hopefully it's the right way around. But uh, we got our pressure gauge here. Of course the glare is beautiful. So we're cooking it right around here. 10, 11 pound. Uh, four. 
Nice. Nice and dropsy. Um, for an hour and 15 minutes. Figured that was the best uh, best time. Um, a lot of different websites had different reviews and um, had different views. And um, a lot of them said hour. Some said uh, 15 pounds. Some said 10 pounds. Some said 11 pound. Um, so we just kind of uh, did a little bit more research. Um, and then we figured out we wanted to run it right around 11 pound for our area. Um, so before you even start doing this, definitely research um, these, you know, for your specific instructions, your altitude. So don't do what we did and research pr um, prior to even putting it on the burner, which we didn't do. Um, and these are starting to suck down. That's that uh, sound you're hearing. But um, we took basically a giant pair of jar tongs. And uh, grabbed onto them, put them in here. Um, so this is still really hot, obviously. Um, and um, we're gonna wait till that cools down, and then we're gonna wash it. Um, also, something we didn't do that we need to do in the future: um, you're supposed to let it sit in steam for like 10 minutes before you uh, apply the. Um, Oh, before you apply the weight, if it's weighted like ours is. So, um, in closing, I um, learned some stuff. Made some mistakes, but we learned some stuff. So, um, basically, sorry if yeah, <laughs> the kid's awake. So, if you hear anything in the background, you know, just parent, parent life. Um, so, here's the, uh, the breakdown of what we've done so far, and then I'll go in with what we've done. Alright, so the first things we did was we cooked our chicken for 30 minutes on 400 degrees. Uh, was it 400 or 450? What? The chicken, the first time. 400. 400. 30 minutes, 400 degrees. Um, uh, make sure you got some chicken bone or some broth or some bouillon cubes. Uh, we made our own bone broth. Um, and then pull that out. Uh, wash your jars out. Um, while you're washing your jars out, um, um, you know, get the, uh, the, keep the broth going, keep the broth stewing, um, while you're filling, uh, your jars, the broth will be done right about the time you start filling your jars, uh, fill them with broth, and then wipe everything down, put them in the canner on top of a canning rack, and then, um, uh, cook, um, Close the lid, let it steam, uh, let all the steam come out, um, make sure it's like a steady stream, like a lot of steam coming out, and then um, and then cook that for another 10 minutes, let it steam for another 10 minutes, and then put your cap on, um, let it steam on high heat, and then put your cap on, and then adjust your heat to the amount of pounds you need. Um, we're gonna in the future. We're gonna get a uh, adjustable one. I think it's five, ten, and fifteen pound. Um, so that way we can cook uh, a variety, a higher variety of stuff, and it's less fiddly. It's, it's fairly fiddly. Um, I had to sit there and adjust the heat. It doesn't take a lot. We had our small burner on like low in order to keep eleven pounds. So um, get all that. And then cook for the you know x amount of time. Um, once it's at, once it is steady um, and the pressure is maintained, um, then you're going to go ahead start the timer for however much. Uh, we did sixty. Uh, we did seventy five minutes, and then we once it was done cooking, we shut off the heat for fifteen minutes to let everything kind of come down back to normal normal pressure. And sorry. And then after that 15 minutes, we then took off the weight for another 15 minutes to let the pressure really come out. Um, and then we opened it, used the jar tongs, pulled everything out. And then ne the next steps are going to be, um, this has got to cool down, then we'll wash it. Um, there is some staining, but not a lot. Um, 
and that's pretty normal. Let's see if I can grab it now. It should be, yeah, it ain't that bad. Oh, it's stuck to the, hmm, that's nice. Anyways, weird. Uh, there's still some water in there, but you see that staining. Uh, that's normal. Uh, that's just uh, what it does, and that won't wash off. That's a stain. And then these will sit here for the next 12, 12 24 hours. Um, and then they'll suck down. Uh, some of them are already starting to, but they're not all there yet. Uh, make sure you put it on a towel, this laminate. It'll eat this laminate right up. So put them on a towel, um, and then they'll cool for 12, 24 hours. And then at that point in time, they'll be all vacuum down, and you can test them, make sure they're all pushed down. Then you take this. That's a jar wrench. Take the, uh, the actual outer ring off. Um, and then you can reuse it or do something else with it. Uh, you no longer need it because the rubber ring in the actual lid itself um, will have melted pretty much and vacuumed uh, itself to the jar. So at that point in time, so at this point in time, we are done. We're just waiting for these to cool down. So that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely shoot them down below. Um, I'm pretty much always... Uh, able to respond to questions within 24 hours um, I do I will be starting work again so I do work a lot so if I can't get to you I apologize I'll get to you as soon as I can but I'm about to put this stitch this all together maybe throw in some cool edits and also at the um, in the parts where I'm speaking out instructions I'll throw those up there as well um, so that'll be it for this video. Thank you for sticking around this long. I know it's probably going to be a long one uh, just because there's a lot of steps. But that's it. God bless, and I'll see you in the next one. All right?